Web and I'm the CTO of Hello Mail. Um, now, Hello Mail, we are based here in Shoreditch, we're part of the Silicon Valley, which I know is quite cool. Um, uh, we were started in 2008, and our mission, our goal, was to provide a better voicemail service. Um, not a very sexy technology, but uh, one that we thought we could still innovate on. Um, in then and now, voicemail um, is a very clunky experience, typically from the operators. So what, what do you do? You dial in, you call in, you sequentially go through your messages. It's painful, it's long-winded, and more often than not, you just want to hang up and do something else. So we thought that in 2008, we saw the rise of smartphones and mobile apps, and we thought here's an opportunity for us to innovate and provide a, more, a much more of a rich experience. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so we, we thought the visual voicemail is really the, the basis of, of our app. So it provides the advantages of you can flip through your messages very, very easily. You can, you can skip the ones that you don't want. You can um, manage them. Um, we, we also provide deep linking into the address book. So we do, we get you the name, the, the photo of, of, of the person. So before, where you already have a phone number, now you can actually can see the, who the person is immediately. So it's a much, much more of a rich experience. Um, so, um, yeah, so, and, and, and I think at the time, we thought there was really no other innovation that was happening by the operators. And, and you know, really the only player was, was Apple, you know, when they brought out their visual voice on client for the iPhone. So that left a lot of opportunity outside Apple's client, but also, um, you know, we have anecdotal evidence to show that there are people who have actually moved to our app from, from the Apple uh, visual voice banner because we provide additional functionality. So, what, so really, you know, it really is the, the app which uh, smartphones and apps which has allowed us to, to, to be here, really. Um, so our app, uh, not only can we do this sort of like rich, rich information around your voicemail, but we can provide a bunch of other services as well. So we can also copy your voicemail to your email, which, which you might think, well, why would I want to do that for? Well, you know, if I'm a, if I'm a business, I might want to copy it for auditing reasons. So I've got a record of all my voicemails. And, and, and also for personal reasons as well. So I might have a, like a, you know, a nice voicemail that, that, that my son left me. So there's, there's, a, there's a bit of... There's a lot more things you can do with voicemail than, than probably a lot of people realise. So, um, so yeah, another thing that, that our app does is it allows you to do voice short messaging. So we call them hellos, and it allows you to do sort of asynchronous voice messaging for other people. So you can do that <coughs> as a reply, or or and you can you can send this to subscribers or non-subscribers. So we'll end up as an email with a voice attachment, or it'll be just being to a subscriber's client. And we use push technology, so you know, voicemails are relayed instantaneously um, to our other subscribers. So um, our market is clearly smartphones. That's, that's why we're here. Um, and we, we found that the Despite being voicemail and not very interesting, we found that there's a lot of interest in this. Uh, we had about 900% growth in the last year. And we find it's also very sticky, and we have like a less than a 1% churn rate. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a valued service. People get on it, and, and they stay. So, um, just moving on to our how we make our money. We have a free, it's a premium service. We offer a free version of the app and uh, you can upgrade to a, to a paid version. Uh, currently, the, uh, in the paid version, you get, you get rid of annoying advertising and also you can do um, personal greetings for people. So, we are live in the UK, Ireland and the US. Uh, and we are looking now to uh, launching other territories to grow to grow our market, um, in particular Canada. 
and maybe even Australia. Um, and we are currently closing our round of funding at the moment, uh, uh, our A round, but we are always looking for more additional investors. So if anyone wants to come speak to me afterwards, it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Question, do you want? So, um, is that on, on the iPhone? Yeah, sorry. Um, <clears throat> it's available on the iPhone, the Android, and the Blackberry. So they're all three native apps that we've deployed. Is, is there a web component as well? Can you access? Yep, yeah, there's an online uh, web portal. So there are, already, there are sort of like three channels here. You've got the, 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 the core apps. You've got the web to access your, your messages if you've lost your phone. But we also have a service where you, you, know, you copy the emails to your Gmail account, so you've got a copy there as well. So here, you can just literally change the diverts on your, or the call forwarding on your phone so that, that when there's a missed call, it comes to our service rather than your, your carrier's default voicemail. So it's quite, it's quite easy. In fact, when you install the clients, it sort of takes you through that process. It's, it's quite seamless to move across. Yeah, I was going to ask a question. How is, when you said you can move messages by, on the web portal or maybe even on the app portal, by presumably typing that in, how is that message generated into voice? Do you use it? The, vo the, the messaging is, is all voice. So, you know, through our apps, you can record a message and then send it to um, anyone in your address book. So, um, so it's always voice, so you're not using a kind of electronic product? No, we're not, we're not doing any sort of transcription back and forth from text. It's, not, it's, not it's, a, it's a voice, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> so so what, what shows up in my email then is a WAV file or some format? Yes. Yeah. Is there any issue about uh, storage because the files obviously are, are fairly large? Yeah, the files we find that they're MP3s and they're typically around you know 120 k, so they're not that you know that big. So for a consumer without a firewall, it's not an issue. But I would think for an enterprise application, that'd be a bit of a challenge. Um, yeah, I guess in terms of what delivering those, those messages, it could be. Yeah, I don't know. You know, we, we, we try and, you know, do a lot to the emails to make sure that they don't get caught in spam filters and all the SPF rules and domain names and stuff. So it's, it's sort of very friendly in terms of delivering emails. emails are an option as well. It's not, it's not part of yeah. that to have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you might have to open up your firewall if you want it to come through, I guess. Like the enterprise will yeah. open up the firewall and let that if you don't mind me asking a bit about your background, sort of how you came to do this, and were you from a technical background or? Was yes, you yeah. I mean, I was. I worked in a previous company, which was delivering actually voicemail um, uh, platforms, and <coughs> what happened was we we literally burnt out because there wasn't a market to sell into operators, and in the end we just went, look, stuff this. We're going to do it ourselves. So we thought well, we we can deliver a consumer voicemail service that. The, you know, that the consumer will pick up and will beat the operators at their own game. So really it was the advent of the whole <coughs> app explosion. Yeah, without the app, we really wouldn't have been able to, to innovate beyond, you know, what was already there. So yeah, it, it was really the key. Mm -hmm. Do you have a typical client that you, know, typical client is or? Yeah, our typical customer is probably going to be like a professional user, um, you know, who gets a lot of voicemails. And he needs to manage them. So, you know, really, that, that, that's really where, you know, the benefit comes out. But I mean, we're also looking to tie up sort of a, a, a team market with the audio messaging. Because we, well, we, well, we, we're trying to make audio messaging easier. Because in the past, you said an audio message, you, know, you couldn't do it. And also, it was probably cumbersome. So if we can make audio messaging as easy as sending an SMS, you know, it's a much more rich experience. Voice is, you know, SMS here is anemic in, in, in what it sort of conveys, whereas voice is, is much more rich, it can make that more convenient. That's, that's a good communication channel. Perfect, yeah.
Hi, I'm, I'm just looking at your uh, slide up here and it looks like you allude to sort of color mail linking up with social media, so Facebook sharing with friends. Can you talk a bit about that angle? Yeah, no, we have a member feature at the moment where you can publish um, either a voicemail that you've received to Facebook, so if you've got a, a kooky Saturday night <laughs> voicemail <laughs> that your friends would love, you can post that to Facebook with a little comment. Um, and also you can just create an audio message and post that to your wall. So we're, yeah, I think we're, you know, we're looking at more of that side and seeing if we're, we'll be posting to other people's walls and you know, expanding on that sort of social um, network integration. Um, now other things like, you know, when you receive a voicemail, maybe we'll, we'll be able to get the status of that, of that person from Facebook. So, you, so really it's about delivering voicemails with much more rich content. And, sorry, second one. Um, have any of the mobile operators um, been interested in <laughs> your app and do they have a response to you when they, do they know that their customers have opted out of their default system and they're using... Yeah, tools? no, they have been, uh, we have been approached by um, a number of the, uh, <coughs> the UK operators um, and done a little bit of a dance and uh, still dancing. So okay. yeah, something could happen along those lines. Uh, can you share with us a little feedback on the usage? Like, uh, if I understand correctly, there is either you can get it through an email, you can get it in a queue in uh, in the app, you can share it on a social network. So, what is the usage there? I mean, what is it? The um, vast majority uh, having it in the app or the app is the, the email app is the core. Majority? That is that is definitely the core. So, you know, you get your, that is the the core experience. You get your messages and manage them. Additionally. You can have the, the voicemail delivered to an email address, um, and then and then as well, we obviously have this, this sort of Facebook publishing side as well. That hasn't been huge, and I think that you know that's been there's been some slow uptake on that. Um, uh, but it's definitely the, the call is, is the app. Just a, a minor comment. You might uh, I don't know whether you know about it. Google uh, Telecom in France just launched a visual voicemail service like two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, which is very neat, I found it. Uh, so you can, uh, it's, it's not an app in itself, it's directly in the uh, uh, messaging uh, from the uh, <coughs> iOS. So you can, you've got the, the list of, uh, like you've got the list of uh, incoming calls, you've got a list of uh, voicemails, you can just play them, erase them, forward them, etc. I think it's just very much the same. I mean, you know, I actually, we welcome a little bit. But there's no app. There's no app. <coughs> Not really. I mean, it's 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 really the uh, the experience. Is you don't have to open an app to do this. Yeah. It's directly embedded into the uh, into uh, iOS. Okay. I, I can show so you it here first. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so what do you find the difference between the free and the paid for? Like, is there a big percentage of people who upgrade and most people stay down on the free one? There, there's actually been a surprisingly large amount. Um, I'm not sure. Can I quote? I can quote 15 percent conversion rate, which I think is is you know fairly a, a fairly healthy conversion rate, and that's that's taking into account that you know right now really the, the main reason is uh, the two main features are no advertising and also personal readings to people. So but still people value it. So yeah, they're happy to um, upgrade. Last question. <coughs> I've heard of it. That's Google. Google Voice, yeah. I mean, we, we're in the States, so obviously we're competing against the likes of Google Voice, and, 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 and the US market's a lot more crowded in this space. Fortunately, here in the UK, our home territory, you know, Google Voice isn't here. And there are lots of reasons why Google Voice probably won't come here in the near future. It's a different sort of market. So, technically, or yeah, te uh, no, from from a commercial model, actually, it's a bit, little bit different. <coughs> you know, they do um, call forwarding. You know, find me, follow me. So they would have to pay an extra leg of the call. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Last one. Very discreet group. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we, we do it so that um, it's at the top of the message list. 
so that when you scroll up, it disappears, and that, that's quite, that's quite oh, difficult. Okay. No, no we, don't do any, we don't do anything in the voice model itself. So <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you.